Hi everybody, Chef Nicholas Lodge here. Welcome to this episode by The Green Tornado Live. Uh, in this episode, I'm gonna be showing you fabulous foliage. And so this week, it's all about four different types of foliage uh, made in different ways that are fabulous to use on cakes, uh, you can use them on cookies, you can use them with your sugar flowers. So lots and lots of fun ways to use these. So in this episode, I'll be showing you four different types of foliage. I will be showing you the fern, which is like a leather leaf fern, which is real popular for bridal sprays and uh, flower arrangements and things like that. As I said, it has lots of application on cakes as well. I will be showing you eucalyptus, which is a very, very sort of in-trend bridal foliage. Um, then I'll be moving on to show you how I can make a really, really simple leaf, which is great to use for a lot of different flower components uh, made with a blossom cutter. And then I'm going to finish off with a little freehand leaf, which is great for small flowers like jasmine and flowers like that. Um, so very, very useful. And as I said, I hope you'll enjoy these, as I said, four different foliages I'm going to show you. So let's get started. So you will first of all need to download the handouts. This is going to help you understand all the directions. So there actually are five sheets um, to download at nicholaslodge.com. And when you go to nicholaslodge.com, just click on um, the recipes templates. And that's where you'll find, as I said, the fabulous foliage download. It's a PDF, so you can download this and print these off. We'll keep this on your computer. We will also need a uh, size guide. Now, size guide is how I measure my uh, gum paste or my flower modeling paste. All right, we're gonna be using this for all of the projects pretty much, especially the first two. So you can also, while you're there at nicholaslodge.com, you can download this onto cardstock. This is a, a set of P a PDF file. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll actually just uh, cut that out. And then if you use a hole punch and then just cut around with a pair of fine scissors, uh, you can create your own size guide, okay? Uh, size guide is something if you're ordering from anything from the US, we include one of these with the products and also Katie Sue does have size guides as well with Flower Pro. But as I said, uh, if you want to get started straight away, you can obviously, uh, as I said, print off your own size guide. Now, when we are using um, the uh, handouts, obviously it relates to the size of the paste, all right? So we're gonna start off talking a little bit about the fern. The fern is, um, obviously this is basically made to use for individual fronds. When we have the fern, the small piece of the fern, these little tiny parts here are called the frond. And so the combination you have is going to vary depending on how large you want this to be. So when you're doing, uh, for example, you can see here from my Flower Pro book, this shows obviously some uh, fern, different combinations here. This is obviously a larger frond. Uh, this is a smaller one I'm going to be showing you here in the actual uh, episode. But you can use these in different colors. You can make them look like bracken, which obviously is popular for sort of autumn, fall time on cakes. And you can also use the little tiny individual components on cookies, cupcakes, uh, petit gâteau, and lots of different other applications in pastry as well. And these molds are designed to be used with flour and modeling paste um, or gum paste. Um, you can also modify sugar paste with Tylo's gum, but these also will work with marzipan and modeling chocolate as well. Just sugar paste or rolled fondant is too soft, okay? Um, so you can make them wired or unwired. You can also even use this um, as an embosser. So uh, for example, for this cookie top, um, you, I've actually just pressed the uh, mold onto my white sugar paste here, or rolled fondant, and then painted over the top with the rainbow dust green um, edible uh, paints. And you see how this could be used as a veneer on a cookie. Um, and uh, so very, very nice, uh, as I said, adaptable mold. So this is part of my Flower Pro, um, obviously, uh, collection. Now in your instructions, it says for the smallest uh, fern frond, so I'm just really basically reading along with, with you. So for the smallest fern frond uh, leaf, take a quarter length 28 gauge wire. Now unless I specify color of wire, it doesn't matter whether you use white or green. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a wire, gonna cut the wire into half, and then you'll cut it into quarters because a wire basically is 14 inches long. Okay, so about um, 34 centimeters, so you just cut it in half and half again. So we've got quarter length wires. And generally in my classes and um, with my cake flicks live, I'm talking quite a lot about organization. When I teach classes, I would recommend, or when you're making flowers, just have a little magnet because this is a good way to keep your wires in one place. It makes it they're not flying all over the place. Now when we use the mold, so this is my uh, Flower Pro um, fern mold, my ultimate fern mold. 
And uh, this fern mold is, that is wonderful um, for making obviously different size ferns. And I'm going to show you today um, using one of the main tips and then I'm going to actually do two of the small fern fronds, uh, two of the medium and two of the large. But as I've just shown you, you could of course do for example, like two sets of small, one set of medium, three sets of large. So the bigger you want the fern to be, obviously the more components you put in. But once you have, you only would have ever have one main tip, which is this end part, but then as far as your components, they always go in pairs, all right? So you'd have either two, four, or six small, two, four, or six medium, two, four, or six large. Um, on the mold, there is also this um, single fern, which can be made, and the directions are on there for that. And this fern is actually, you can wire this, all right? But also, this is really nice to make if you were doing, let's say, a buttercream cake, like a drip cake. You could do, like, for example, pipe buttercream roses, and then you could just put a couple of these ferns with your pipe buttercream roses. So this works really well for, as I said, just to use on a quick sort of buttercream celebration cake as a flat fern without being wired. Now, when we make the fern, we're going to start off with the smallest uh, fern. We're going to use 28 gauge wire, which we've already got cut, instead into a number four ball of green paste. Now, the green paste I'm using, I'm using here the Renshaw uh, pre colored uh, paste, gum paste or flower modeling paste. So, in the UK, this comes in a pack like this, a 250 gram pack. And this obviously comes in white, but also comes in several colors. Um, and uh, we also have the green as well available on our website. All right, so this is the green. And um, what we're going to do is going to measure off your paste. So when we use the size guide, okay, so I'm just going to show you measuring the paste off. I've already pre-measured these. But what we do there is you're just going to take, um, so number four size. So when we use the size guide, we're going to pop that onto the size guide. And if you watch my hydrangea uh, tutorial, which was my first lesson on uh, Green Tornado Live, uh, you'll see how I use this. We put number four there. So you want about one third below the hole and about two thirds above the top, all right? So that would be how we would use. So of course you might be making two or four of this size. When you're measuring your little balls of paste off, you're going to keep those underneath a little cup. I use a silicone mat so it gives you like an airtight seal. And then when we do the medium, we're going to be using a number six small size. So six small size, that's going to be a number six that would just go through the number six hole, all right? So it's going to be what we call a small number six. All right, and then for the large size one, we're going to be using a number seven small. So this is going to be a number seven that just goes through the hole, okay? And uh, so those will be for your, fry, for your little fur and fronds, all right? So I'm just going to show you this. Now, when we're um, using the paste, um, I usually work on a little silicone mat. This is some vegetable shortening or white fat, all right? So Crisco, or as I said, you can use Trex and uh, white flora can use coconut oil and we're just going to condition the paste, all right? So I'm just going to just condition the paste with a little bit of the vegetable fat. I'm going to take my uh, wire and I'm going to dip my wire into egg white. So I'm using here some egg white. And with my egg white, I'm going to just put a little bit of egg white onto my wire here. And then I'm just going to push this through so the actual little wire will penetrate through the ball of paste like this. You can see it's like a little pearl, okay? And then using a little bit of corn flour, corn starch, which I have in a little uh, pop sock or a knee high. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of this. I'm going to now just make this into a carrot shape. So pretty much the wire is going all the way down the length of the paste. Just mold this around. And this wants to be made to approximately the length of the mold cavity. Now, when we're using um, the flour pro molds, a lot of the shallow molds, I will take a little bit of vegetable um, shortening, a white fat, or you can also use a product, uh, this is called Easy Release, which is part of my Nicholas Lodge brand. This is a coconut oil and uh, beeswax and lemon oil product. Um, and also, as I said, coconut oil can be used. But basically, what we're gonna do is just gonna put just a little tiny bit, very, very minimal amount on my finger into the mold. I'm gonna press this into the mold and I'm gonna use a cosmetic sponge and then with just a cosmetic sponge, I'm just going to press this into the mold. So you see what that's done is actually filled up the cavity like this. Now you can also use a Dresden tool, and especially on some of the larger fronds, you can just push into that with the Dresden tool, okay? And then if you want to use a back veiner, this is a poinsettia. So this is my Flower Pro poinsettia. You can use, but this is optional. So what we do is we line this up, all right? So you actually line this up. So you can see here, when you line this up, you position this onto there like so, so the wire is actually in the little V shape. And just gonna just press onto there like so. And that will just give you like a little veining on the back of the leaf. You flex the mold, 
and you take your little fern out and here you have your little fern and then usually I just give it a little bit of shape. And if you've got a little bit of excess paste there you can just pinch that off with your nail here and just going to give that a little bit of shape. And on the larger ferns you can also bend those if you want to as well. All right, but you see how these little ferns are really great to use. And then all I do is just dry those into a crepe foam former like that. You see? So these are the two small ferns, these are the two medium, these are the two large. And so they would be all made in the same way. Um, now you'll notice on the uh, medium and large, they have this little cavity in them, this little hole here. And that is actually on the mold. That is almost like a little island. And uh, so when you, when you actually press the piece, you can see how these little islands, there's a little island here. All right, and there's a little tiny island there. And on the, this one here, it's got two little islands, all right? So, so these little islands are um, obviously what we use to, uh, to create that natural look to the fern. So you get a more sort of light and airy look. So you can actually sort of like see through the, so you can actually sort of see through the little uh, holes, you see? And um, so, so that would be, um, so you do, of course, the medium and the large would be done exactly the same way, all right? And then when you do the large frond at the end there, um, you're going to use for the main tip, we need a number eight small. So this is going to be a number eight that goes through the hole. Okay, so that's going to be a number eight small. And you'd only ever have one of these at the end of the front. Now, as I said, each time you're going to condition the paste. All right, so you're just going to work your paste, a little bit of shortening into this, vegetable fat. And again, this is just going to be the large one. Now, when you finish with using the molds, all right, so once you finish using the molds, you're just going to use a little bit of uh, dish soap, washing up liquid, a nail brush. Just give them a little scrub. I then usually pop them in my food dehydrator. So now when you do this, when you do this one, all right, you can basically do this in the same way where you put the wire into the ball of paste. Or another way you can do this is you can actually wire it um, afterwards. So it's really, as I said, a question of trying both techniques. If your paste is a little bit sticky, you can just put a little bit of corn flour on there as well. Okay, so here we're going to just put this ball of paste into there. And again, just using my cosmetic sponge, I'm just going to work this down. And this is on this larger one, but you can see how the little island will pop up in the paste, you see? So you see how when you press this in with your cosmetic sponge. So I use a cosmetic sponge because it's a really, really easy way to, to do this. And on this one, what I do is uh, when you get towards the end here, I'm going to use a little fine scraper. Um, now you can use, this is my new Flower Pro uh, scraper. So you can use this and you use a sawing action. And what that does, you see how it's going to trim off the excess paste, but you see how it's opened up the two islands. You can also use, like this is a little Tico scraper as well, which works really well. Now, when you get to that stage, you're going to then just re-push that back in with your cosmetic sponge. So the, this is on a 26 gauge wire. So in your instructions here, it says that you're going to the main tip, use a number 26 gauge wire and number eight small ball of paste. And then what you do here, now because this fern, as you can see, curves a little bit, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to slightly curve the wire, okay? And again, I'm just going to put just a little bit of egg white onto that. And then you see how you can just take the wire here and it goes into that channel. And it was just going to go, so you're just almost like following the shape of the fern. So you see the wire is actually sort of gone to the right of this channel, to the left of this channel, okay? Just because with the Flower Pro, these are to make things look very realistic. So obviously ferns are not necessarily symmetrical. Now when you do the veining on this one, all right, the slight difference is because we, if you did the wire, the veining would be off. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to put the, you're almost going to line this up with the tip of the leaf like this, okay? And it's going to just press this down like so. So just going to put a little bit of veining onto the back here. Just going to repress that on. And then what I do is I just repress it so that the central vein, you can see the central vein is going to follow the shape of the fern, okay? Now, when you take the larger one out, and you'll see me do this on some of the other, what you do is you peel the paste back, and again, using your little scraper, you see how I'm just peeling the paste back like this, and you see out comes this beautiful fern like that. So you see how you'll have all of your pieces. So again, this is just gonna go into the crepe foam former. So it's going to just line this up in the crate. This is called, uh, I say in the US we call this uh, crate foam, but it's actually convoluted. So convoluted means concave and convex. And uh, so as I said, this is something, uh, 
you can find easily online. It's also something we sell on nicholaslodge.com as well. Um, and uh, but it says, we call it crepe foam, but it's like a convoluted foam. And I use this a lot to make my flowers and foliage natural. So I'm gonna use some quarter width floral tape. This is being cut with my uh, tape cutter. This is the, as I said, tape shredder with the floral tape. So just rotating this or with a pair of scissors. So we're gonna use quarter width tape. And uh, what I'm gonna do is gonna start about two and a half centimeters from the end here. I'm gonna go around with quarter width tape and then you just slide that up to the bottom. You're gonna come down about two and a half centimeters, about one inch and break off. So you will also do that just on the uh, on the components. Remember, these are the dry, dry components, all right? This doesn't take long, and I use a food dehydrator. So once you've taped everything, we're going to take a 22-gauge wire, and uh, then what I do is I'm now going to swap out to some half-width floral tape, and I'm going to tape the fern. So you're just going to tape the 22-gauge wire right up against the base. Again, it doesn't matter whether you use white or green here. You're just going to just tape down just a little ways, and then I'm going to use some fine tweezers, so taking here some fine tweezers, I'm gonna start off with the small leaves. Now, on the smallest leaves, I'm gonna leave about sort of a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, about four or five millimeters, uh, because what I wanna do is I'm gonna bend one to the right and one to the left, so that the ferns will actually sort of sit into place. So you see how they're actually gonna come out to be about level with the fern frond from the main tip of the mold, see? And you're gonna put these in in pairs, all right? So Usually what you're gonna do, you're gonna put these in in pairs. So these ones will go here, this will go here. Just gonna just tape this together. And then I'm gonna just start taping down and then of course you're gonna put in the medium and then you'll put in the large. So then we just put, once you've finished your combination of leaves, so remember you can have whatever combination you want. It's gonna create the, so if you're doing this in a spray, you can have some different ones, and then you can bend this to the right or to the left, whichever you prefer. Now, as far as the dusting goes on this, we're going to then move on to the dusting. Um, so I'm going to just use a simple dusting onto this, and I'm going to take some, uh, this is a color called foliage green, which is just sort of like a mossy, sort of darkish green color. But remember, as I showed you in the beginning, um, it sort of shows on the book, in the book, many color combinations. So you could use a sort of browny color. And of course, when you're doing like brackens, you can start off with a more of an like an olive green. So you're just gonna do a little bit of this green around the edge. And you're gonna do this on the edge of the ferns. So we're going to just finish off with the foliage green front and back, and then I'm going to take some gray. So this is a gray color called dove gray. Now if you don't have gray, you can just use a little bit of black um, into some white powder, but obviously there are several companies that do gray dust. And then I'm gonna use a flat brush here, and I'm just gonna brush down the center of each of the segments with the gray. This just gives a really, really nice color. I use gray a lot, and you'll see on the next project, the eucalyptus, we'll be using this as well. So a little bit of gray goes around here. And then we're going to bring in a steamer. So this is a closed steamer. So I'm gonna use the steamer here. Now, ferns are not really shiny. So what I do is I just only steam the fern. So just a couple of times on each side and that's gonna give your fern this really nice sort of natural look. So you can see here, when of course you first steam it, it's gonna be quite shiny, but then it will have this more natural look. This is very similar to the color of like the Japanese painted fern, and you can of course use this for, as I said, lots of different types of fern leaves. Uh, remember also you can use this as little individual fern leaves. So like for example here, like on the cookie, um, you see I've used that with little cherry blossoms. And then you can also use this on, for example, in my Flower Pro book, and it references this, when I make mimosa, I use this to make the little mimosa leaf. So this is used for as a filler leaf or used with other um, types of leaf with other uh, flowers as well. This next segment, I'm going to show you how to do the eucalyptus. Now this is my 
uh, Flower Pro Wedding Foliage Mold. So this one mold will actually make uh, three different varieties of eucalyptus. Um, so the one I'm going to show you is called the Baby Blue one, which is this slight heart-shaped one. There is also Silver Dollar Eucalyptus, where there are four sizes, and Seeded Eucalyptus and a little seed. This also has on it English Boxwood, Italian Ruscus, and also the Dusty Miller Leaf, which these are all very, very popular all wedding foliages. And there is a YouTube I have on uh, my Flower Pro, uh, which actually shows you how to make the other varieties of eucalyptus and also the other leaves as well. Now with the, um, the mold here, we're gonna use this, so we're gonna take number five, number six small and number six balls of paste. I use three parts blue and one part green plus a little gray. So what I actually did there is I've used some of the Renshaw blue and Renshaw green uh, flower modeling paste or gum paste. And then what I've done is you mix that together. So I've got like 30 grams of blue and 10 grams of green. So it's a three to one ratio, all right? And then I've added a little tiny bit of the Rainbow Dust Pro Grail Pro Gel Gray um, to just give it a little bit of a gray uh, sort of sagey color. But you could also, if you don't have pre-colored paste, you just want to make it like almost like a sagey green color uh, here. So you see how it's like a, I've got a little bit of gray in there. So you could use like a juniper green, you could use a little bit of gray, a little bit of blue and gray, and a little tiny bit of green. Now when we um, measure the balls of paste, so these will be the paste we need. So we've got number, um, number five, that's regular size, number six small, that goes through the number six hole, and then regular number six, just like I showed earlier. Um, on the fern segment. So we're going to take this, and when we make the um, ferns, I'm going to add the uh, eucalyptus, just a bit like the ferns, but a little bit different. But this is like I made the larger fern. So we're going to use, these are the three cavities. I'm going to show you the largest leaf, all right? So again, just a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening goes into the cavities, like this, all right? And you're going to take your paste. So I'm going to show you the largest ones first. So remember, condition your paste, and then we're going to take that I'm going to place this into the paste. I'm going to use my cosmetic sponge. I'm going to press it down, you see? And then using your cosmetic sponge, we work it to the edge of the leaf. And this is where Flower Pro gives you very realistic looking leaves. And they're nice and thin on the edge because we, the edge of the molds are thin. And so you generally are going to use this concept. Now here, we're actually going to establish a ridge. So using your, so you can use your fingers like this, all right? just to establish like a little tiny ridge. Um, on when you're doing the smaller leaves, you can also use your Nick stick or your companion tool just to sort of establish like a little ridge. So this really emulates similar to what a groove board will do. Now here we're using quarter length 28 gauge white wire and I definitely, as I would recommend white wire here. Remember if I don't, I'm not specific about the color of the wire, it doesn't matter like on the ferns, but here you want to use white wire because you've got a paler color. A Little bit of egg white on your wire and you see then you're just gonna uh, use the little channel and you're just going to push the wire into the little channel so it goes about halfway into the leaf. And you see the channel is on all of my Flower Pro foliage and petals. Makes it really, really easy. There's no way you can go to the right, the left, get wonky or whatever. It's going to be perfect. Now you can either use the back of the poinsettia vena or something else you can use is the back of the hydrangea I used in my earlier episode on Cake Flicks Live for the hydrangea back. So when you've got the little nipple here in the middle, so you just would literally just make sure that you position that so that goes above the top like that and you're going to get the nice veining onto the back or as I said on the ones I've actually done here I've used the uh, poinsettia. So whichever you have and that would just give you your veining veining onto your, uh, to your leaf. But just if you, it's not right in the middle, you can just repress that onto there. But as I said, this works really well, all right? So you see again, now when you take these out, all of these, you turn them over, and then just using your little scraper, you see how you're just gonna remove these from, and you'll have your beautiful veining for the eucalyptus. Now, I'm just gonna take my little companion tool. I'm just gonna just push up the paste there. So obviously that, so you get this nice base to it. And then you're gonna either use, can use the back of your pad, the little mini pad. So this is my Nicholas Lodge pad, but if you have any foam pad, or you can also even do this onto your finger. You're gonna use the shaft of the companion tool. And if you're doing it onto the pad, you actually hold the shaft at an angle like this, and just gonna just do a gentle rolling around the edge. You can alternatively use, of course, a balling tool, which is a classic way as well. Just soften very, very slightly. So that's done on the back of the leaf, and then on the front side, which has got the raised vein in the main vein in, we're gonna use the companion tool and just gonna just pinch the very, very base of the leaf around the companion tool, all right? And again, you're gonna take the leaves, and then these leaves would just be put into your convoluted foam, 
So I've got obviously these already. You're just going to place the leaves into the convoluted foam like that. And you can see this is the one that's done with the hydrangea back, and then this is the one that I'm showing you here. So it's just a little bit slightly different veining, all right? Um, so anyway, so you just would continue. So again, you can make any combination of those leaves, and they're just going to be put to one side to dry. But normally I just pop this into my food dehydrator uh, that I showed in my last episode with the cookies, um, 115 degrees or 46 centigrade. Just put it in on the foam, put them in there for like 30 minutes, 45 minutes to be totally dry. Now once you've got the leaves made we're going to then move on to take uh, here I've got three 22 gauge wires doesn't matter if it's green or white here and you're going to use either gray floral tape or white floral tape. Now floral tape comes in lots of colors in pink and yellow and this is a gray floral tape so we're actually going to tape down the three wires to make the stem. It's going to break that off okay like so and so we're on step number um, here on the number three. So then we're going to take a number two ball of paste. So we're going to take a number two size ball of paste, which I've already pre-measured. A number two size ball of paste. Again, just going to just touch your finger onto here. I'm going to roll this into a little sausage. All right, and this wants to be, uh, this sausage wants to be about five, uh, five millimeters um, in length. All right, so it wants to be about five millimeters long and make the little sausage about five millimeters long, like this, all right, so quite, quite tiny, so about five millimeters. And then you're just gonna take a little bit of egg white, just on one end of the wire, you're gonna brush a little bit of egg white onto the end of the wire, like this. And then you're just gonna push the wire into the little sausage. So you're gonna put this into the little sausage, like this, okay? And then you're just gonna just mold this down with your fingers. I'm using a little bit of cornstarch, corn flour on my fingers here. This wants to be about 15 millimeters long, and the Y want the Y wants the sausage wants to be about almost about half out the other end of the wire. So your sausage is about 15 millimeters long, okay? So about 15 millimeters long, which is just um, 15 millimeters is about um, five eighths of an inch, all right? And as you can see, but about seven and a half of that millimeters of that is going to be past the end of the wire. And then what I do is take a pair of scissors. So with a pair of scissors here now. I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just going to make a vertical cut down the middle of this. All right, so you're going to cut this like it looks a bit like a little lobster claw, crab claw, and you're just going to pinch that with your fingers like so. So flatten these. And then you see how what this is going to do, you're just going to push this back together and this is going to give you like the new growth on the end of the leaf. All right, so it's going to give you that like new growth on the end of the leaf. And then you take what you're actually going to do here is you're going to make a number five. Um, this is your would be a small leaf, which would be a number five size. So you're just going to use this just like you would make your small wired leaves. So a number five size piece of paste. I'm going to pop this into here like so. Just going to press this on. Okay. Just again, just push up with your wire there, and then you're going to use whatever you've used for the wired ones. You're going to put the back veiner on there. And then you're just going to take this out. So see, using this technique works really well. And then what we're going to do here is using some scissors, we're going to then, uh, this is going to be uh, just trimmed to make it like the shape of a, almost like a little butterfly wings. So what I'm going to do here is going to take the leaf I'm just going to just trim around with my scissors. So we're just going to actually just cut like this, cut like this, so they become like almost like little, you can see like little butterfly wings, all right? Like a little, almost like the top part of a heart. And then all I'm going to do here is going to just, again, just soften these slightly, so you can just soften these. And you can also, when you're doing the small um, leaves, you can actually use the other end of the companion tool so you can just go around like we would traditional softening technique, just soften around just a little bit. And then we're going to pop this onto, onto the, um, as I said, cosmetic sponge. Then I will take a little bit of egg white, and I'm going to brush a little bit of egg white just around, just underneath. So literally, as I said, underneath where the other leaves are. We're going to put the little bit of egg white just here underneath where the 15 centimeter, middle, middle, middle meter sausage finished. And then we're going to put this on I'm just going to pop this on with a little bit of egg white, like so. And then you're, what you're going to do is you're going to pinch it 
and you're going to move it around. So you see how it becomes like almost like two, so that like the two little tiny um, leaves. Okay, just make sure that one opens up. But you see how you just sort of open these up like two little tiny leaves. All right, like this. So you just sort of squash it on, and you're just going to squash it round like this, and see how this will give you the little tiny leaves at the top here. All right, and. Um, so that's sort of how you would do that part, and then you let everything dry, so you let everything dry. So this one is obviously uh, one I made earlier, so it's already dry. And also with the uh, variety I'm showing you, this is compact or baby blue or spiral um, eucalyptus. So sometimes the leaves go in pairs symmetrically, and they're all like in a row, and in other times, like almost like a helter-skelter, it goes round in a spiral. Um, now, once you've got all the components made, uh, next thing is going to be to actually do the taping of these. So we're going to tape this and we're going to use quarter width gray or white floral tape. All right. So remember, this is the gray floral tape. So I've cut this with my tape cutter. And so you're literally going to now start taping. So remember, you start and then you're just going to slide the floral tape up to meet. So you see the floral tape will come up to the bottom of the wire, come down about two and a half centimeters, about an inch. All right. So literally, as I said, you just take, so just go around, start off because you can't start the tape here. So you always start off and then you see you just slide the floral tape. So you see the floral tape is like a tube and it just slides up to the bottom. And we're using quarter width tape for this part so they're not too bulky. So now I'm going to just separate the leaves. So you have your small leaves, your medium leaves, and your large leaves. There we go. So then once you have your leaves, leaves completed, we're going to then uh, going to put these together. And so when you assemble them, we're going to just just bend them just very slightly at a slight angle, just a little tiny bit down the wire, like this. And then we're going to start with the half width gray tape or white tape. Now remember, if you can't get gray tape, just uh, use uh, white and then when you dust this you'll see on the instructions but see what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one as a spiral one so I'm actually coming around like almost like a helter skelter all right going around like a spiral or a candy cane so you see how you're actually going to do this so I'm going to spiral the first four leaves so you see how they're actually going to be spiraled like this and then I'm going to come down and then I'm going to add in the leaves here so this will be then the so I'm going to put in two medium sized leaves. These will actually go in directly where the other ones sort of finish. So these will go in now in sort of pairs. But also sometimes the eucalyptus, the, the pairs will be sort of almost in a line. And in other times they're going to be sort of like, as I said, almost like on the spiral variety. Because there's like actually literally hundreds of varieties of eucalyptus and gum. Remember, this is just one of the three, um, the three ones that are on the um, wedding foliage mold, all right? So it's a beautiful addition to your flower repertoire or foliage repertoire to have obviously a mold and you can make obviously the six different leaves uh, from that one mold. So I'm just going to pop that and just going to come down here and you're just going to finish where your wires naturally finish, all right? So this is going to be how you would do the, um, how we do the eucalyptus. So for the coloring in your instructions, it says dust with some blue with a little pearl. Now the thing is, um, I don't want to have sort of really bright blue, so I want almost this sort of like petrol sort of blue color. So what it is, I just use a little bit of blue and a little bit of eucalyptus or gray. So you're almost making like that sort of gray blue color, but uh, you know, so it depends what dust you have. And I've added a little tiny bit of pearl dust to that. Um, so basically, you're just going to make almost like a pearlescent, and you're going to just brush some of that into the middle of the the leaf. You can see I'm showing you here on the back. So you're just going to put some of that almost like in the, which I've already done some of the leaves. So you see in the center of the leaf, front and back on all of the leaves, you're going to have that color. 
Okay, then I'm going to use eucalyptus. So this is going to be eucalyptus dust. So I'm going to just take a little bit of eucalyptus. But as I said, this is a good color uh, to use. You can use this uh, mixed with the blue if your blue is a bit bright. And then it's going to go around the outside of the leaf. So you just literally going to just come around the outside of the leaves with the... So what this is going to do is just going to give you like a tonal color because we of course have the like the nice sort of sagey color with the eucalyptus. Now remember also that eucalyptus varies a lot in color. If you actually watch my other two YouTubes on the other types of eucalyptus, you'll see how each of them I did a slightly different color. But this one is a little bit more, slightly more with the bluey color onto there. So you've got the eucalyptus around. Um, then we're going to take some uh, pale chocolate. So this is chocolate brown here where I've used corn flour or corn starch. And what that does is going to basically uh, lighten the whole effect of that. So I'm going to put just a little tiny bit of brown here, of the, of the brown. So you see the brown is quite strong. So you would use the, see the pale brown here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the pale brown. So you could also just do this on a napkin and add just a little bit of corn flour, corn starch to it. I'm just going to put just a little touch of the pale brown just at the base of the leaves here, like so. All right, you just repeat that on all of the leaves and just on the inside as well. So you're just going to have a little bit of pale brown here. So you're just going to put just a little bit of brown just in the base of the leaves here. And then if you were using white floral tape, what you then do is you take some of your gray dust, okay? If you don't have gray, use the eucalyptus, but then you just dust over the white floral tape down to as far as you're going to see the tape. And then, of course, that would then change the color of the stem. And then once you've got your uh, dusting completed, and generally I always dust on a napkin, and then uh, what I do is uh, then you never take straight from the pot either. And again, just like on the, um, on the ferns, we're going to then steam to set the color, okay? So we're just going to just start, uh, do this to set the color, because just like ferns, the eucalyptus leaves are not really shiny, okay? And then they're going to, uh, obviously, so this is just going to steam. And you can see here on the, um, this just also shows here on the mold there, but you can see how this is actually a hoop I made for a wedding cake where I actually made it with all the six foliage. So it really is beautiful even just to combine those all together in one, uh, one sort of just using foliage. Because a lot of brides now, uh, you know, carry, you know, succulents or foliage, and so you don't always have to have flowers, all right? So fabulous foliage can be really, really nice to do as well. And again, you can see this one, I did a little bit more symmetrical, all right? So you can see this one, I've done it in pairs. This one here, I've done more of the spiral type. You see, just to show you really the two ways you can use that one cavity. This segment, I'm going to show you how to make blossom cutter leaves. This is a unique way of making leaves from a blossom cutter. So when we do this, uh, the, these leaves can be used for like basically plain leaves. So for example, here you can see on my sweet peas, these are leaves done with the smaller size blossom cutter. All right, um, or the medium size, and then here on uh, you can see on my uh, lime here um, with my citrus blossoms, I've got the small size, the medium, and the large. Okay, so it's a really unique way, as it talks about in the introduction, for flowers like honeysuckle, fuchsia, gardenia. We can use this to obviously cut the basic leaves out. So we're going to roll out green paste number three on the pasta machine and cut out with a 70, 90, or 110 millimeter cutter. These are my Flower Pro. Um, uh, called uh, this is called Pro Cut Edge, so they have a very sharp cutting edge, and uh, so they're three sizes: seven centimeter, seventy millimeter, nine centimeter, ninety millimeter, one hundred and ten uh, millimeters, eleven centimeters. All right, I'm going to show you the medium size leaves today, but of course you can use this in any size. So I've rolled out my paste. So this is number three. So this is not not too thin, okay? And this is a unique way. Um, now this won't work with every blossom cutter because some blossom cutters, the way they're made. You can't flip them around and see where you're, um, but because this has got an open back, it's easy to do, okay? Because some blossom cutters have like a closed back, so you won't actually be able to see how to do the uh, next step. So you take this out, you see it has a really nice cutting edge. I'm just going to pop your excess paste back into your bag. And then what we're going to do is going to take the cutter. You see what I do is I'm now going to just line up the cutter like this. So the cutter is actually lined up. So it will sort of sit in between the, you sort of get it so it looks symmetrical. Now it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same because the leaves will then look natural. See, so then when you make the second cut, all right, which you press in there and go around with a circular movement, what you have there 
is almost just like a, and you can actually use this as like for Gerber daisies and daisies and flowers like that. It's a super quick, quick way to make a sort of, and of course you can make this into a succulent. Uh, you can do different things with this. Now, all we're gonna do then is once you get to that point, you can use like, for example, like a little mini palette knife and you're just gonna just make a cut so you're just going to mend. Usually I do two cuts so that you get that nice look. But what we're doing there is we're just using the actual, you see here, to cut this. You can also use a cutting wheel as well. So you can just use your cutting wheel. But so basically what you're doing is you're making these into a teardrop shape, you see? So you actually will get uh, 10 uh, leaves per uh, actual piece there. So you're just going to put your leaves into your little um, plastic flap. So I'm putting these into the multi-flap and then you'll take one leaf at a time. Now we're gonna use 28 gauge wire, it can be green or white. And the great thing about this leaf, you can make this in any color, um, depending on what type of variety you're making. So put a little bit of, and then you're just gonna hold the thickness of the paste and you're gonna insert the wire in about halfway into the leaf, okay? You're gonna pinch around the bottom just to secure that. And then what you would do is you just would literally then put this back in the multi-flap. Now, the multi-flap has got two plastic sheets. And if you don't have one of these, you just use like a plastic page protector. But you're just going to put the leaves back into there once you get the wire in. So obviously, you'd line up your leaves. So you'd have your 10 leaves lined up. And you can have some, obviously, up and down, up and down like that. Um, and then what we do is you're going to use, this is a one inch or two and a half centimeter ball tool, okay? Now, if you don't have a large ball tool like this, you could also use the end of your rounded end of your rolling pin, all right? But this is a two and a half centimeter ball tool. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to thin around the edge. So what this is going to do is going to give your leaves that nice thin edge. So you see how you just thin around the edge of the leaf like this with the ball tool, all right? So you're just going to go all the way around the edge of the leaf like so. And you do that on like all of the leaves that you have, the 10 leaves. And then one at a time, we're going to take the multi vena. So this is the multi-purpose vena. So this is a multi-leaf vena convex concave. And uh, I've used this in some of my uh, other videos and one some for cake flicks as well. So what we do there is we're going to take just a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable fat or the easy release, put that on the right hand side of the um, vena. You're going to take your leaf out and you're gonna pop your leaf. Remember, this is quite unique in its design because this leaf vena, you just put the wire into the channel. So you see the wire will just sort of sit in the channel here. And then what you do is you just come over with the uh, left-hand side and it's gonna press on the top, you see? And then when you take this out of the vena, this is gonna give you the, the leaf, you see? Like this, all right? And, uh, but you'll have the, the lovely vein in onto there. And then we're gonna just soften the edge of this so you're going to take a little, again, your little pad. Now you can use traditional ball tool technique, all right, which is to soften around your edge like that. Uh, but I typically use now for most of my softening, I use my little companion tool, which comes with the filler flower that I showed in the episode before last for the hydrangea. So we're just going to use your companion tool because this way you won't really erase the veining off the edge. And you're going to turn this over and just going to hollow the leaf around the companion tool. Just pinch this to shape, all right? And you're just gonna put that in. But what's really, what I actually like about this is the leaves will have a very natural look to them, okay? And uh, so don't worry is when you, you know, sort of overlap the cutter and cut, make the second cut. So you see that is done with the small size cutter. So that's the size leaf I would use with the 70 millimeter cutter. Uh, the one I've just shown you is the 90 millimeter, which is gonna be this size here, okay? And then the 110 millimeter size cutter is used for the larger leaves. So for, you know, gardenias or flowers like that, fuchsias where you have several leaves, um, you're going to, to use uh, those in different sizes. Um, so that's going to be the leaves and just let those dry and uh, then we're going to move on to the assembly. So I'm going to tape the leaves once they're dry. Remember the, in your instructions, the large leaf, which is done with 110, that's done on 26 gauge wire, okay? So because they're a little bit bigger, so just slide your brown. And I'm using brown tape. Obviously, like you can use brown, you can use green, you can use dark green. And then of course, you can use these just as a foliage. So if you were going to just do these as foliage here, you can just literally just start to put the leaves in and you can just tape down the leaves like this and then you can put the leaves. See, and then like for example, you could take a large one here. So this is an excellent like filler, trailing type of leaf. So you can see you can do large, medium, and small. Then you can add a 22 gauge wire when you need sort of structural strength there. 
you can put in a wire and then you see then you could do like for example a little sub branch so you could have one come in here and then one here and then these could be attached here so you see how you could actually have them like sort of coming out like this but for there's so many um, flowers that just have plain leaves so this is a really excellent way uh, to make a very very simple leaf using your blossom cutters but just remember it you know i obviously use my flower pro pro cut cutters have a very sharp edge but because of the open design of the cutter enables you to do that a lot of the cutters on the market blossom cutters you can't see the the top so it would be difficult to sort of rotate that around but uh but as I said, you know, you should be able to sort of manage to get sort of the basic concept of the leaf using whatever you have um, at home. And you see how that's going to give you your leaves like this, all right? So coloring, I'm using a apple green color. I've already done some of the leaves, so I'm just going to put apple green basically in the center of the leaf, both front and back. So I'm just going to put the apple green front and back on the leaf. Then I'm going to use foliage green, which is a darker green. I'm using a flat brush. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to brush a stripe a lateral stripe down the cent central vein and just a little bit of green around the edge but as i said this leaf is very uh, useful because you can do it really in any color uh, depending on what you're mixing it with so if you're putting it with you know sweet peas you might use a sort of mossy or apple green of course you can make this really dark darker for gardenia leaves um, once we get to that stage we're going to then uh, steam the leaf now what we're going to do here is we're going to steam the leaf because the steam will actually uh, set the powder um, because we have a stripe on here, we want to actually establish the stripe. So we're just going to lightly steam the leaf. All right, and that's going to just set the powder. And then you can either use a spray lacquer. All right, so this is like the PME spray lacquer. You can also use a leaf glaze. Leaf glaze is a diluted confectioner's glaze with half glaze and half alcohol. And uh, like we sell this pre-mixed, some companies in the UK and Europe do, do the same. Sometimes it's called like dipping glaze as well. So it's basically a diluted glaze. Um, in a lot of my classes, I use a spray. But just make sure when using a spray lacquer, though, you do that on a protected surface. Just going to spray this onto the leaf. And then when that, that evaporates, it's going to give you a nice natural um, look on the leaf. And uh, so you can see here, this is one that's already done. And you see that one is just has a more natural look to it because it's not as shiny because once the alcohol evaporates from the spray, but uh, they will give you your leaves. All right, so a really wonderful leaf to use for many different applications. So I'll help you have fun with the uh, blossom cutter leaves, a new way of making leaves. This last segment, I'm going to show you these, what I call freehand leaves. And uh, some of you may have watched my uh, Cake Flicks Artists Around the World where I use this technique for the wisteria leaves. So it's wonderful for things like wisteria, uh, for example, you can use this for jasmine. So when you're doing jasmine, um, like Confederate jasmine or Chinese jasmine, any of the jasmine varieties. So it's a really, really useful technique or just to use purely as a freehand leaf, all right? Now, um, when we do this, um, we're gonna use, uh, you can use number three, four, five, six, or seven size ball to paste. And you also put them together in odd combinations like three, five, seven leaves. I'm gonna show you here a number five, which is referenced in your instructions. So we're gonna take a number five ball of green gum paste, all right? So we're just gonna make number five balls. So of course you can make five or seven of these. And then we're gonna take a wire here. We're gonna use a 28 gauge wire. I'm using green wire here, but, and then we're gonna put the, gonna brush some egg white or some um, egg white or glue about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch down the wire, okay? So it's gonna take some glue here. So we're gonna put just a little bit of egg white or glue, 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch on the end of the wire like I showed making the ferns, all right? But uh, here you actually push that through, so it comes through the end of the wire like this, so just like I did the ferns, but you want the egg white on here. Just because of the way we do this, you need to make sure the um, cone is, or carrot shape is supported onto here. And you're gonna make this into about a three quarter inch long, um, as I said, about 20, mil 20 millimeter uh, carrot, okay? So it wants to be about 20 millimeters, about three quarters of an inch in length. It's gonna mold around the bottom of this, but the wire pretty much goes all the way to the end. So taking my small foam pad, okay? So we're going to now, um, so once we've done that, flatten between your thumb and finger. So you're just gonna flatten this between your thumb and your finger, like so. All right, and then we're going to place it on the hard green side of the pad. And then we're going to use a large stick or a medium pin. So you're gonna use like a large stick or a medium pin. All right, and basically what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna just sort of roll back and forward 
to establish this sort of shape, you see? So you're going to get this nice shape. Now, sometimes you might need to use a pair of scissors, like if it looks a bit like odd, one side, you can always give it a quick little manicure with your scissors, all right? Because you have to try and keep that, because you want to keep that, so you want to get this nice sort of almost like a spearhead shape, all right? And we're going to use the same vena that we used in the previous segment. So this is the little uh, multi-leaf vena. So just position that onto the multi-leaf vena so the wire goes between. Just going to turn this over, press this on, take this off, all right? Just pinch that. And again, if you need to trim the end just to make it look symmetrical, you can do. Because when you press it in the vena, it's going to obviously also, so see, just trim that to give you the nice shape. So you want to just sort of trim that to give you your symmetrical shape of the leaf. Um, and then once you take that out, you're going to then um, remove and hollow the base of the leaf. So usually all I do is literally just hollow the base of the leaf. So using my little companion tool, it's going to hollow the base. And then you can also bend the leaf if you want to bend it to a slight shape. Just pinch it like a taco and just leave that to dry. Okay, and just put that on your crepe foam to dry. And then once those, once those have dried, you're literally just going to just tape them. So it's going to just tape this with half width tape. And then you can uh, put these in configurations. Now when you do the configurations, uh, you're normally going to take a 22 gauge wire. So you will take a 22 gauge wire, which where you start putting the groups in, you can put the, the wire in or further down, depends really on how you're going to use them. And remember, so you always have like what? So you're always working odd numbers. And then you're going to take your pair of tweezers, and then you're going to then bend these in pairs, like so. I'm just going to pop these in, like that. And then coloring on this is really exactly the same as I did in the previous. Um, segment. So I'm just going to verbally just talk you through that. So you then would then put, so you assemble and then you're going to then, um, once you've done that, you're going to then dust moss green down the center and then around the edge steam and then brush with leaf glaze or lacquer. So you're just going to use exactly the same but just one color. So I just use the moss green. But of course this could be apple, it could be foliage, it could be forest green, uh, depending on what you're going to use it for. And that is um, how you would make the last leaf. But remember, very, very useful leaf, freehand, to, you know, just these freehand leaves to use in amongst flowers or actual flowers or foliage to go with, say, wisteria or jasmine family.